Please stand and let us sing together, There's a Wideness in God's Mercy. of our Lord Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christ Lutheran Church. If you're a visitor this morning, we're so thankful you're here. There is a room for distant seating. We want you to feel safe today. Uh, we also have a, a few new changes to the liturgy. You'll see that the uh, alms basin has been moved because we're going to have an offertory. Uh, that means your child may have received a nickel today on the way in. That's to prime the pump for the well. It's okay to bring your own nickel. Uh, we, we don't want to um, theologically teach that you get a nickel when you come to church, but <laughs> we're just trying to get it started here, right? Uh, you probably got a yellow piece of paper to fill out that um, time and talent form for our stewardship team. Stewardship team, raise your hand. We're so thankful for your work. You're going to hear a little bit more about that. We know we all walk in the door to worship with something on our hearts, so we're lifting up the Shones family and Ken, who has just been put on hospice. We're thankful for all our confirmands uh, who start confirmation now. Um, and you're going to be hearing more about that. And a big happy anniversary to Marvin Gloria for 60 years. Happy anniversary to everyone who's got an anniversary, and happy birthday to those celebrating birthdays today. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God whose teaching is life, whose presence is sure, and whose love is endless. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins to the one who welcomes us with an open heart. God, our comforter, like, like lost, lost sheep, we have gone, gone astray. We gaze upon abundance and see scarcity. We turn our faces away from injustice and oppression. 
We exploit the earth with our apathy and greed. Free us from our sin, gracious God. Listen when we call out to you for help. Lead us by your love to love our neighbors as ourselves. Amen. Amen. All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. By the gift of grace in Christ Jesus, God makes you righteous. Receive with glad hearts the forgiveness of all your sins. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. O oh God, our teacher and guide, and guide you, you draw, draw us to yourself and welcome us as beloved children. children. Help, Help us to lay aside all envy and selfish ambition, and ambition that we may walk in your ways of wisdom and understanding as servants of your Son, Jesus Christ, Christ our, our Savior and Lord. And Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Then you showed me their evil deeds, but I was like a gentle lamb led to the slaughter, and I did not with its fruits let us cut him off from the land of the living, so that his name will no longer be remembered. But you, O Lord of hosts, who judge righteously, who try the heart and the mind, let me see your retribution upon them, for to you I have committed my cause." Psalm 54. Save me, O God, by your name, and vindicate me by your might. Hear my prayer, O God. Give ear to the words of my mouth. 
for the insolent have risen up against me. The ruthless seek my life. They do not set God before them. Salah. He will repay my enemies for their evil. In your faithfulness, put an end to them. For he has delivered me from every trouble, and my eye has looked in triumph on my enemies. Second reading is James chapter 3 and 4. Who is wise and understanding among you? Show by your good life that your works are done with gentleness born of wisdom. But if you have bitter envy and selfish ambition in your hearts, do not be boastful and false to the truth. Such wisdom does not come down from above, but is earthly, unspiritual, devilish. For where there is envy and selfish ambition, there will also be disorder and wickedness of every kind. But the wisdom from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, willing to yield, full of mercy and good fruits, without a trace of partiality or hypocrisy. And a harvest of righteousness is sown in peace for those who make peace. Those conflicts and disputes among you, where do they come from? Do they not come from your cravings that you are at war within you? You want something and do not have it. So you commit murder, and you covet something and cannot obtain it. So you engage in disputes and conflicts. You do not have because you do not ask. You ask and you do not receive because you ask wrongly in order to spend what you get on your pleasures. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Here ends the readings. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. They went on from there and passed through Galilee. He did not want anyone to know it, for he was teaching his disciples, saying to them, The Son of Man is to be betrayed into human hands, and they will kill him, and three days after being killed, he will rise again. But they did not understand what he was saying, and were afraid to ask him. Then they came to Capernaum, and when he was in the house, he asked them, What were you arguing about on the way? But they were silent, for on the way they had argued with one another about who was the greatest. He sat down, called the twelve, and said to them, Whoever wants to be first must be last of all and servant of all. Then he took a little child and put it among them, and taking it in his arms, he said to them, Whoever welcomes one such child in my name welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes not me, but the one who sent me. The gospel of the Lord, we say, Praise, praise to you, O Christ. Christ. Please be seated. It's officially sermon note season at Christ Lutheran. Benton, would you do me a favor and just hold your hand up? If you are in confirmation and you need a sermon note, this is a freebie sermon for you. I'm about to fill in all the blanks for you. If you're an adult who wants to know <laughs> what these are, Benton's your man. Okay, thanks, Benton. Seventh, eighth, and ninth graders are expected to submit 15 of these sermon notes per year. That means they are listening to 15 sermons, first of all. Yeah. And then they're giving me feedback on them. <laughs> then I read the note and give them feedback on their feedback. 
That is a lot of gospel engagement, and I love it. So today, I'm going to make it easy. Question one, what do you think is the main idea of the sermon? This is it. Everything that Jesus does was in, for, and through his family. His family is technically who we know for sure. Mary, his mom, right? God, his father. Joseph, his stepdad. And then he had like a auntie cousin, Elizabeth, and her husband, Zechariah. And then their son, John the Baptist. In the lesson from Mark today, we've got this little uh, image you can see on the screen of Jesus kind of cuddling. Uh, I'm going to make an educated guess. It could be one of his uh, nieces, nephews, uh, family, friends, babies. I'm making an educated guess because I know that Mary lived in Capernaum, and Jesus visited there often. He's in a home, right? Uh, He is with disciples who have wives, who probably have children, and they are probably running around. So the answer is everything Jesus does is in, for, and through his family. Okay, number two, what good news did you hear in the sermon? Ready? (laughs) Jesus fills the suffering of the entire world with his loving presence by dying on the cross after being betrayed, denied, and tortured, and then raised from the dead three days later by his heavenly Father, thereby making every human eligible to receive the same exact grace that is eternal life. You know this is recorded, Benton, so you can come back and watch that later, right? (laughs) That is the good news of any sermon. (laughs) Question three, what is the bad news of the sermon? (laughs) I don't know. This is like saying Good Friday was a bad day, you know? But... Anybody who has a family, right, might say that the bad news is even when families can be annoying, although maybe you're in a family that's not annoying, right? Okay, ever. Um, Even when families are annoying, the family unit is still the way that God works in Holy Scripture to fulfill God's plans and purposes, Okay, remember it's the family of Israel that brings Jesus to the cross and is there for him abiding as he suffers and dies. So if we wanted to sum up the salvation story, I'm saying go all the way back. Adam and Eve have Cain and Abel. Very stressful family situation, right? Fast forward to what I like to call the soap opera section of the Bible. David. I mean, come on. That is a family, right? But if I'm going to sum it all up, I would say when all the armies have laid down their weapons and all the thrones are destroyed and all the wealth is spent, what you have left of the salvation story is a man dying on a cross And there at the foot of the cross, standing on the ground, is his mom, and his best friend is holding her up. It's his dad who's the one who decides when the story is going to take a plot twist that changes everything. I don't think that's bad at all. I mean, if you wanted to get bad. I'm imagining this Jesus in our little icon today as being the guy who tells those really like bad dad jokes, you know, to the kids. And uh, these are, this is my style of joke. What time of day was Adam created? A little before Eve. (laughs) That's bad. 
Who was the biggest sinner in the Bible? Moses, because he broke all ten commandments at once. <laughs> ah. it's, they're only going to get worse. Just, just prepare yourself. <laughs> Who was the greatest comedian in the Bible? Samson, because he brought down the house. <laughs> Question four. Did the sermon relate to any experience in your own life? How? Well, really only you can answer that question, okay? Um, I can tell you about my family um, that has provided me with both the best of suffering and grace, right? Um, Sometimes in the same event. Um, I think when I was in 7th, 8th, and ninth grade, I felt like growing up took forever, and I couldn't wait to be independent out on my own. But now I want to say enjoy being the age that you are because this is how suffering and grace can be combined into like just the same moment. I feel like I just brought my baby son Aiden home from the hospital, but now he is 20 years old. On the day Aiden graduated from high school, I learned that the human heart can contain two opposite feelings simultaneously. I felt the most pride I have ever felt that my baby achieved this milestone successfully and was headed into a future of his choice. Wow. I mean, I was way up here. And... I felt brokenhearted that my baby achieved this milestone and successfully and was headed into the future of his choice. I was way down here. I imagine that is just like Jesus in just these few sentences of Mark describing his divine plan of being killed to fulfill his heavenly father's mission while snuggling his earthly loved ones at the same time. Question five, will the message you heard today make a difference in how you serve Christ in the coming week? If so, how? That would be another sermon note. If you had to report on the kind of behavior this sermon provoked. So this is how I answered it. If Jesus loves all people, all, including his family, sticky, snuggly children, old, dusty pastors, Exhausted parents, bullies, people who get bullied, people who fight over who they think is the greatest, even people who killed him. What could possibly be my response to such indiscriminate love? And with whom will I allow allow myself to associate? if Jesus associates himself with this entire list of people. Question six. What will you remember about this sermon a week from now? (laughs) I'm just going to give it to you. What animal could Noah not trust? The cheetah. All right, question seven, ask a parent or another adult or peer what they heard and write their response here. Okay, right, you're going to want to write this verbatim. Pastor Elizabeth says her illumination of soteriology was scintillating. (laughs) If you want an example of what soteriology is, look at question two's answer, okay? Question eight, what did you like best about today's worship service? I mean, besides the sermon, of course. Um, 
I mean, I'm a big fan of Nolan reading. I'm pretty pumped that we have Keegan as acolyte today. But I got to give it up to the choir. Thank you, choir. Okay. Uh, High point of my week. Okay, high point of my week. I feel really uh, heart warmed by the outpouring of love shown to me by Christ Lutheran after the death of my friend. Thank you. Uh, The low point of my week is that I have just felt completely distracted by the death of my friend. All right, next to last, we're still on the sermon notes, by the way. For you adults, you might be thinking, is this a five-page essay? No, it's just one little, here's what it looks like. It's tiny. Something you would like prayer for. So FYI, anything that you write down here, I am going to keep discreet but not private, right? Because I, I have to read it and give you feedback on it. So discreet but not private means that I am praying for the grandfathers, right? I'm just not going to tell you who's. Uh, would you please pray for me, for the family of my friend June, her husband David, and her children Meredith and Chris. June has died, and I trust that she rests in peace. Uh, but her husband and children are coping with the shock of her death and the sheer tsunami of love poured out for them on June's behalf. Okay, last but not least, let's bring it home. Uh, Do you have any questions about the worship service or sermon that you'd like to ask the pastor? Just FYI, if you do that, if you write in something here, I'm probably going to bring it back to the whole congregation in some form. Because if you're asking the question, it's highly likely 10 other people have the same question. Okay, so here's mine. Where did the tradition of writing sermon notes come from? You can tell me when we're walking out to amazing refreshments. Thank you to the Peterson family. Okay, well, that was really hard work. It's very nosy of Christ Lutheran to want to know all my business about what I think during the sermon. Uh, But I am interpreting the nosiness of Christ Lutheran as meaning Christ Lutheran really cares about me and wants me to know beyond the shadow of a doubt that Jesus loves me. That's pretty cool, 7th, 8th, and ninth graders. We expect a lot of you, but we also have a lot of support and encouragement for you. We love you. And you are enough. If you never listen to another sermon, you are enough. The one reason these are laid on you, I think, you can contradict me when we walk out if you know, that a sermon note is laid upon your shoulders is because adults need you as much as you need us. And we all need Jesus. Yes, and we all need one last joke. It's not a dad joke, and it's not a Bible joke. I, it's called a mom joke, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do my best with it. It is not Bible-based. But it did make me giggle. Where do bad rainbows go? To prism. <laughs> Don't worry, it's a light sentence. <laughs> we need Jesus.
We affirm our faith in God using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Rooted in Christ and sustained by the Spirit, we offer our prayers for the church, the world, and all of creation. For the church universal, its ministry, and the mission of the gospel, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the well-being of creation, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Remembering all elected leaders, especially Joe, our president, Tim, our governor, and Tom, Norman, Ryan, Mandy, Trace, and Bruce, our mayors, for the people of Afghanistan, for peace and justice in all nations, and especially the communities of Biscay, Biscay Browntown, Glencoe, New Auburn, Plato, and Silver Lake. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For God to bless the marriage of Karen Ramos and David Urich now and forever. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For Ken, Connor, Sharon, Arlene, Fran, Nita, and all whose names are on our prayer list. For the poor, oppressed, sick, but bereaved, lonely, for all those who suffer in body, mind, and spirit. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For those celebrating a wedding anniversary, especially Marvin, Gloria, Roger, and Millie, Jonathan and Julie, Darren and Tammy, Chad and Aaron, Matt and Kelly, Elwood and Louie, Jeff and Shelley, and William and Deb. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For those celebrating a birthday, especially Connie, Linda, Rillian, Logan, Chris, Margie, Ariana, Josh, Dave, Robert, Dylan, Steve, Brooke, Avery, Robert, Nora, Bob, and Jesse. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For all those who serve our armed forces, especially those who serve on active duty, including Andrew, Bryce, Ryan B., Cass, Sandra, Darren, and Ryan S. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For your mission to Christ Lutheran Church, for the person who will be called to be the next pastor but doesn't know it yet, for the church council and the vision team, for the many ministries planted here, especially for laundry love. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For an end to the virus and for bringing healing to the afflicted. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For all those who affected by natural disasters. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For those who have died, may they rest in peace and rise in glory. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We lift these and all our prayers to you, O God, confident in the promise of your saving love through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Your weekly tithes and offerings are appreciated. The ushers are passing the plates today, and this is the moment when anyone who has something for Christ well comes forward and clanks it into the well. So if someone handed you a nickel this morning, would the Spirit move you to offer it to the work of God's mission at Christ Lutheran Church?
with special thanks to those who've submitted their yellow uh, time and talent forms, one thing that does is help our parish office keep up with your contact so we can connect you with the ministries that God's calling you to. Let us stand and say together in thanksgiving, God of abundance, you, you cause streams, streams to break, break forth in the, the desert, desert and, and manna, manna to rain from, from the heavens. Accept the gifts you have first given us. Unite, unite them with the offering of our, of our lives to nourish the world you love so dearly. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and the Lord. Amen. And we sum up all the prayers of our hearts in the words our Savior Jesus Christ teaches us, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Uh, please be seated for two brief temple talks. Good morning. I am Jim Carlson, and I am here on the behalf of the Stewardship Committee. The committee has been working on a new and improved time and talent sheet. As you know, we have traditionally handed these out during our stewardship drive in November. The committee, along with Pastor Elizabeth, thought that getting these filled out and back into the church office sooner would better facilitate filling spots. As we plan ahead, this document will serve as a useful tool while we work together to meet the needs of our church. Something we've discovered is that people don't always know what item on the list re what it really entails and therefore may be reluctant so to sign up for it. Be assured that if you do sign up and find out this isn't really what uh, strength for you and you aren't being committed without your consent, for example, if you sign up for uh, Cantor thinking, I love horseback riding, <laughs> only to find out later that the kind of Cantor we're looking for is someone to lead singing their worship and has nothing to do with horses, trotting, or galloping. We will certainly let you pass. That may be a crazy example, but you get the idea. We have included a few short descriptions of some of the committees and if you are interested in something but are feeling reluctant to please ask, we are happy to explain anything on the list. And if you have any questions, don't hesitate to contact any of the con stewardship committee members. Carla Keene, Vicki Harris, Chris Davis, Kayla Muncho, Sherry O'Donnell, Jody Braben, uh, or me, Jim Carlson. Today you will be given a time and talent sheet Please fill it out and return it, or go online to the church website where you'll also be able to complete and submit the form. And finally, the committee would like to thank you for making a personal commitment to the needs of our church and for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Thank you. As required by the Turns Constitution, I make the formal uh, announcement today and also next Sunday. Uh, there will be a special congregational meeting to be held on Sunday, October 3rd, 2021 at 1015 a.m. or directly following our Sunday morning service. The purpose of this meeting is to vote on the council recommended proposal to install an electronic sign outside of the church building. Also, while I have access to the microphone, uh, a reminder about in two weeks, we have the uh, fundraising for Habitat for Humanity, uh, the Oktoberfest in Hutchinson uh, with great German food, great German polka music, and all funds that are, all profits that are made from that fundraiser are actually doubled by Mid-Country Bank. 
So if you need tickets, I have them. You can talk to me today or next Sunday or anytime, and I'll be happy to get them for you. Thank you. Please stand. People of God, you are Christ's body, bringing new life to a suffering world. The Holy Trinity, one God, bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen. The living word dwells in you. Thanks be to God. Thank you. 